Hey guys, it's Kevin and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. Today we're going to be creating a animation that I worked on this week that looks like this. This is a cube that is breaking apart and inside of it is a nice bright glowing cross. And uh, you see all of these uh, rays coming out and uh, the stone breaking apart into many pieces and a really cool uh, animation to make. And uh, I'm going to show you how I created it. Now I'm not going to do you know everything exactly the way I did this one. I just want to show you the tools that I used and so you can make something similar on your own. Now I am using Cinema 4D and you are going to need Redshift for this one. My render engine is Redshift. Uh, you can do this in Octane or possibly even the standard uh, render settings for Cinema 4D, but I don't know how to do that. Uh, I only know how to use Redshift. So this tutorial is going to be exclusively uh, for Redshift. First thing we want to do is create a plane. So let's go ahead and do this. There's our plane, it's too small. Let's make it 4,000 by 4,000. And then let's add a cube right on top of it. And uh, we'll just make sure that it's sitting right on top of this plane. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change my, um, I'm go ahead and change my view here. I kind of want the, the cube to be right in the center there. And so something kind of like that. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to break apart this cube into a bunch of pieces. So what I'm gonna do is get a Veroni fracture, go over to MoGraph, Veroni fracture, and then put your cube inside of it, just like that. You see all of these colors here that shows you all of the pieces of the cube that are gonna be breaking apart. Uh, if you click on Veroni fracture and then sources and then point distribution, you're gonna see that it's only at 20 pieces right now. So it's only breaking into 20 pieces. That's not enough for me. I want to do a lot more than that. So I'm going to change that to 500. And now we have a whole lot of pieces in this cube. Now to break them apart, uh, there are a lot of ways to do that. Um, we could use tags like rigid bodies and collider bodies, but I'm going to show you how to do it without using those. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a MoGraph effector and then we're going to use the random effector. So effector and random. And then what we're going to do is we're going to adjust uh, the parameters here. So let's go all the way, let's go to zero first. So make sure we're on the, the very first frame. Go to your parameters and let's change all of these to zero, zero, zero. And then do a keyframe for each one of these. This will start off our animation. Go all the way to your last frame. And now let's change it to 400, 400 and 400 and then click your keyframes again one two three and we should have an animation that looks something like this so all of the pieces are, are going out in different directions they're going up and down left and right and back and forth uh, they are going down through the floor um, so that is something if you want to uh, to play with other settings to so they're bouncing off of the floor uh, that would be something different, not covered in this tutorial. But right now we just have all of these cubes going in. Uh, this cube is being breaking up, broken up into several pieces and going out. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to add a light that's inside of this cube. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of creating a cross, which is really just two, uh, just two rectangles uh, rotated, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do a sphere. So let's go ahead and get rid of this Veroni fracture so we can see it. There's our sphere, and I just want the sphere to be like right inside of where the, um, let's see here. I want it to be right inside this cube. So let's get our cube back up. Let's make sure we're right inside there. That's all we want, just a big old sphere right inside our cube, just like that. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to um, we want to add a light to that sphere. So I'm going to shift and C on my keyboard and I'm going to start typing in redshift and I'm going to do a redshift light. So just go ahead and here, click redshift light, drag that into your sphere just like this. And then what you want to do is uh, you see how uh, the sphere is right here, it's above the plane but the redshift light is down here at the plane. So we're just gonna drag this up like that. So it's like right inside of the sphere. Now, when you move the sphere and the redshift light, it goes along with it in the same spot. Go to your redshift light and uh, we're gonna start playing with some settings. But before we do that, let's go and get our render view up. 
So here's our Redshift render view so we can watch a live um, render of how everything's going. And then what we want to do, Redshift Light, let's go down to our General tab and let's move our multiplier up pretty high, kind of like this. All right, so that's pretty high, but we can't see anything, right? Everything's black, and so uh, that's not what we want. We want to make sure that sphere is invisible. We don't want to see it, so let's just go ahead and make it red right here so we can't see it, and we want to make sure we can see the light. So on your redshift light, make sure this bottom one is green. Okay, so you can't see the sphere, but you can see the light it, it, in our render anyway. Uh, as far as the actual viewport, it doesn't really matter. But in our render here, you can see this bright light that is shining, and if you make it uh, brighter like this using the intensity multiplier, you can see how that's uh, getting brighter and brighter. The next thing we want to do is go to your volume. We do want to do use uh, volume light here. So let's go ahead and change your contribution scale uh, to 0.5. And this is going to uh, get that, that nice blurry lighting uh, that we're gonna be working on later. Now we need to create an environment. Go to Redshift, um, go to Objects and Redshift Environment. And now you can see this is what our scene looks like. It's way, way too bright. Uh, so we need to go down to our redshift light and we need to go to general and we need to make sure that uh, intensity multiplier is not quite that high. So something, you know, it's up to you, but maybe like 4,000 uh, might be okay. So now we have a really bright light here um, and it's just, it's just a circle. It's just a, because it, we have it attached to our sphere, right? So it's just a circle light right here. If you want to do a cross, you know, obviously do two rectangles and then uh, change the, uh, the shape of this light. Uh, but we're just going to use the circle light for this tutorial. Now, if I bring my um, uh, Veroni fracture back and my cube back, now the cube is blocking all of that light. And so now you have a black render view. There's, there's nothing to see because all of the light in the scene has been uh, hidden. So what we want to do now, so we can at least see the, we, we at least want to be able to see this cube and we want to see the plane. Uh, so we're gonna make another light. So just go to uh, Redshift and let's go to um, like an area light would be fine. And then we'll just bring this area light up here. It's going the wrong direction though. So we need to rotate it. Uh, so it's like aiming downwards, you know, so we want to have like a, like an overhead light is just like beaming down on uh, the entire scene, something like that. Um, and we want to add some volume to this one as well. So go to your general and uh, your multiplier is at 100. We'll change that in a second. But for your volume, uh, let's change it to 0.1. That's way too bright. Uh, so let's go to general and let's bring that multiplier down. Oh, that's still too bright. Um, so we can go all the way down to like five or something. Let's go back to your volume. 0.1 is probably too high. So let's go to 0.05 and that looks a little bit better. Okay. Uh, and so what, what we're doing is we're just adding a little bit of light, um, to the scene just so you can see what's going on. Um, and let's change the color of it too. So go to general and just go to, um, temperature and you can just change that light so not like a nice uh, warm light if you want to. Actually, we'll make it a little bit cooler because that's what I did in my animation. Uh, we'll make it cooler light. So just drag your temperature slider over and um, we'll make our um, we'll make our redshift light, we'll make that a little bit warmer. So let's go to uh, temperature here and let's just bring this down. So now we have a nice orange light right in there. I still feel like my overhead light is a little bit too intense. So I'm just going to bring that up right there. Let's go to that volume 0.03. That looks a little bit better. Okay, let's bring our uh, Veroni fracture and our cube back in and let's hit play and let's see what happens. So right now you see all of the light is hidden because that sphere is inside of that cube. You can't see any of that bright light. Uh, when we hit play, it starts to reveal that light and you can see how it's kind of like busting through the uh, all of these cracks. I'm gonna make my render view just a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on here. Um, so you can see how it's it's very grainy on the render, but let's play it through just a little bit and let's stop it about right there. So you see how we have this bright 
um, light right in the middle of this um, this cube, and it's kind of going through. You see all of these nice little rays uh, just busting through all of these uh, broken pieces. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Veroni Fracture, and then down here at my sources, instead of uniform, I'm going to do um, inverse normal. And what that's going to do is it's going to change um, parts of the... Uh, Parts of this cube are going to be broken up into small pieces, and some are going to be large pieces. Uh, so let's try that animation as well. You see it breaking apart. You still can't see the light. At this point, the light is still hidden, still hidden. And now you start to see these, these little uh, light rays coming through, just like that. And then eventually, once you get to the end of your uh, animation, to the last frame, you're going to see all of these pieces just going off to the all sides of the uh, the frame and then you're going to have that light revealed that bright orange light right in the middle so that's that looks pretty cool that's that's how you do something like that uh, the last thing i want to do for this tutorial is show you how to make a um a uh a material for this cube because right now it has all these colors on it so just go to veroni fracture and uh, we just want to make sure you uh, check off colorized fragments we don't want that to have any type of color on there I'm going to go down here to create and materials and oops, I'm sorry, redshift materials and new material. And we'll just apply this to our cube and then we'll double click it. And this is very, very tricky with all of these different nodes that we can move everywhere. So we're not going to do that. I'm not going to explain that. I'm just going to go down to our presets and I'm going to do something like iron. Iron looks pretty cool. And, uh, or even lead. Let's try lead. lead. Lead might be pretty cool. And so what that's going to do is that's going to give uh, a little bit of material um, effect to your, um, your blocks here. So now they look like little lead pieces or iron pieces, depending on which one you click. Uh, these pieces are just flying off in all directions. Uh, but that's pretty much all you got to do, guys. Just um, use your redshift lights and then add some volume. And uh, I've got a light hiding behind this this cube, and as it um, as the cube breaks apart, you're going to have all of these little light uh, elements be revealed. These nice little rays coming out, and uh, just a really cool effect that you can do in um, a short amount of time in Redshift. As far as the render settings, since you're doing all these lights, you're you are going to have a lot of grain. And so, what I re recommend for render settings is go to your lights. And um, so on your, your sphere light right here, change your samples pretty high to like 512. And then also at your area light, uh, make sure that one is high too. I would, do, I would probably do 512 for that one as well. And uh, let's do a little quick section here so we know what it looks like. So you can see how much uh, changing those samples on the actual lights are going to get rid of that noise. And so uh, that is that is my my tip for a quick render setting is just to change your samples a lot higher on your light settings, and that should look pretty good. But guys, that is the conclusion of this tutorial. Pretty short today, uh, but have fun with it. Uh, create some lights and then uh, reveal them as uh, things are breaking apart, and uh, you get some really cool effects. And uh, if you play around it long, long enough, you're going to get something like this that I created yesterday uh, where we have this cross uh, that is just kind of shining through this breaking cube uh, with all this really ni nice lighting uh, rays going in all directions. Guys, that's my tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, learned something from it. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys can create. Until next time, happy creating. And I will check you out again at the next tutorial.